I have always liked the Vikings. Just something about their aesthetics, savage culture and awesome mythology that is just super interesting to me. And I think that theme and all of the things I just listed, it makes for great storytelling. As you can see in pop culture today, and just look at Marvel for example, with their heroes Thor and Loki. Um, there are a few Viking games out there on the market at the minute, the biggest being the solo player game God of War, turning from Greek mythology and exploring Norse mythology. And there's also a few games like Banner Saga and Bad North on my radar at the minute, which I do want to pick up. So this video is going to be my personal review of Northgard, so disclaimer, this is going to be my opinions, so take it with a grain of salt, have your own opinions, let me know in the comments what you think, what you disagree with, and what you do agree with, or if there's anything you think that is critical to the game's review that needs to be addressed that I have missed. Um, so a bit about Northgard, it was released on the 7th of March 2018, developed and published by Shira Games. So I have 102 hours in the game, uh, mostly skirmishes with friends against AI. I have had a few multiplayer games, but mostly skirmish with friends. I have played quite a bit of Conquest. I have played the storyline on normal difficulty. Uh, that was on my Twitch, if you want to catch my Twitch out, Twitch plug, Twitch TV dot Toxic Coffee on screen now. <clears throat> I'm a PC gamer, so I know there was a bit of controversy around the console version not having Conquest or something like that. I haven't really delved into that and I won't be touching on that in this video, as I'm a PC gamer and I don't really know anything about that. Um, another disclaimer as well is that I rarely play RTS games, um, but Northgard was that first kind of jump for me. You know, I played StarCraft before in those kind of games, and I didn't really enjoy them. I played them for fun, and my brother is a big, big fan of RTS games, so I played them with him as well. But Northgard was the first kind of strategy game that I really jumped into, and it's actually pushed me on to buying other similar games, more in the 4X style, though. So, the current ratings of Northgard. On Steam, it's 9 out of 10, with overall very positive reviews on there. Metacritic gave it a 77%. PC Gamer gave it an 84%. And the Toxic Coffee review of Northgard is going to be 8 out of 10. And I'll go into more detail after the general game overview. So the style of the game is very cartoony. It's got a very characterised style. It's very bold, clear, not very gory. There is a, a, a story mode of the game, which lasts roughly about 15 hours, I think I did it in just under that. And there's different mission objectives, and there's a very decent narrative to it as well. And although it can be corny at times, it is supposed to be light-hearted, and it very fits in with the theme of the rest of the style. Um, all of the mythology in the game as well seemed very accurate to my limited knowledge. I dabble in Norse mythology a little bit, but I'm not an expert. The music in the game is very catchy, it fits with the light-hearted feel, and all the ambience is fitting. It's the opposite of intrusive, it kind of feels natural to be there. When you notice it, it is pleasant, and when you don't notice it, it's because it's done well and just kind of phases into the background, it just makes it feel a bit more polished. The voice acted cutscenes are very good, a highlight of the game, and there's some very good looking, I think digital painted freeze frames that go along with the voice acting as well, uh, to highlight the main story beats of the game. Now let's talk about mechanics. So the game is a tile based game, it's a strategy game, and each of these tiles have resources on them like farmlands, mineable minerals, to advance your colony, expand and upgrade buildings, etc, etc. Lore can be generated to be spent in the lore skill tree. You can also build a warband to fight other players or neutral monsters around the map. The finer points of gameplay come from which clan you play, as they have different boons and play styles. The Raven Clan, a community favourite, encourages you to build on your economy, and the Wolf Clan adopts a very aggressive early game at play style. Let's not forget about winter. Throughout the year you'll be stocking up on resources to try and keep your stocks as high as possible to last out the winter. And the winter drains resources quite heavily, so make sure you've got enough stocked up. Uh, there is multiplayer, both ranked and casual. There is a very high skill ceiling to this game as well. There's a very big difference between casual play and ranked play. Playing with my friends, for example, is a very different experience than getting stomped in online multiplayer. There is a fairly small community on this, however, so the higher up you go, the longer the queue times will be to get into games. 
The Conquest game mode is a very good recent addition to the game. It provides a challenging environment where you can go solo or co-op and advance through different missions and scenarios, and after each game you gain boons. So that's the general overview of the game. Let's now move on to my opinions and the actual meat of this video, my review. Let's start with the positive. So first up, the storyline is very good. It's very light-hearted and a bit corny like I've mentioned, but it fits very well with the theme of the game. The narrative is very good and so are the characters, and there's great voice acting and art throughout all of it. I think differentiating different clan uh, war chiefs was, a very, was very well done and it was very integral to the game's success. And everything fits together with the art style. You start by seeking revenge on someone that killed the king, your father, and stole the regal horn. And that's the opening story hook of the game, and you'll follow that plotline throughout the story of the game. One thing I think the game does very well is that the theme and the lore fit very well. It's never forced upon you with an info dump. It, it always feels natural and things are explained as you go, and you're never feeling overwhelmed with the story, even if you have no knowledge of Norse mythology. The enemies are very cool and stylistic as well, fitting very well with that Norse mythology kind of theme. You've got the Draugr and the Jotun, which are basically kind of zombie-like animated things and, and undead giants and stuff like that. The art style is probably one of the more challenged aspects of the game. Uh, I've seen a lot of people online don't like the art style, but personally I think it fits very well. It is a matter of opinion, but I think it, I, I like it. It's clear, it's concise, which I think an RTS needs to be. So about the mechanics. The mechanics are very easy to grasp. It's not hard to understand most of the core concepts of the game after your first couple of games. Um, however, it is very hard to master, which works very well for this game. There's a high skill multiplayer, but there's also casual play, and I think that if you're looking for a fun experience with your friends, playing multiplayer, and you know, kind of exploring the clans, playing against each other is a very fun time. However, it can, unless you really want to spend some time in this game and get really good, the multiplayer can be a very challenging experience. I struggled a bit because I got stomped on my first multiplayer game. I had to go back and learn the higher skill ceiling parts of the game. One thing I like about the game is that it's a challenging experience, but it doesn't feel bullshit. It's kept tense and it makes you want to come back and defeat it again, but it doesn't feel like you were ever cheated or you lost because of something in the game. It always feels like you can take away something and learn, and in the next game you play, you'll be better. One thing I want to talk about with this game, which I think is very big part of its success, is what I call creative cohesion. Everything seems to fit together, from the bold cartoony looks to the light-hearted story and music. Everything's easy to understand at the beginning with the mechanics and its clear readable UI makes for a very well-designed polished feel and makes a fluid experience in what makes it so likeable. The map editor, a very recent addition to the game, is awesome and I actually have a video on the YouTube channel um, where I do a showcase of the whole map editor so if you are interested in that go check it out. Okay on to the negatives of the game. Um, unfortunately some of the story missions and sometimes the conquest missions too can seem a bit boring and lengthy. The mission in particular, one in particular was the conquest missions for the bear. The first one opens up with winter, having a freezing winter every year which really stretches that time out and makes it really hard to play. And winter itself can sometimes feel like a waiting game, it really slows down the games, which are already quite long. It's 12 minutes per year, and depending on what world difficulty and number of playing players you're playing with, could be from 20 minutes to an hour plus. But saying that, I think that the core mechanic of winter is a very good addition to the game, keeps it unique and fresh, and is very interesting to play about. I'm not sure how you could change that to make it better. In comparison to other real-time strategy or simulated games or 4x games, it could seem a little oversimplified. Less satisfaction in city building as well. It's pretty much limited to the one skill tree you have that is dictated by the clan you chose at the start of the game, and also you can upgrade each building at once. Main differences in playstyle are altered by the clan you choose. That's the main customization you have. You can't really change your game style in game. It's kind of dictated by the clan you choose. There are obviously different tactics you can use in a game to spice it up a bit and that are useful for each scenario. But for the most part, when you lock in that clan, that's kind of you'll be going for those boons. 
Personally, I'm not a competitive player, but from reading online, I can tell um, from like Reddit and various forums is that these things need to be implemented for it to be a better competitive experience. Hotkeys are apparently a massive thing, which I agree with. Unit selection and grouping are also a massive thing. In the more competitive strategy games like StarCraft, for example, a big part of that is keeping your actions per minute very high, quickly using hotkeys to select different buildings and units you've personally grouped, moving them around the map like that. that all of these things combined could make for a healthier competitive and more satisfying competitive experience. Also, a personal thing I thought to do with quality of life is that there should be task queuing added, I think. So villagers automatically perform building tasks in the same tile, but it could be nice to manually queue actions on multiple tiles and have them move from point to point and then say you want them to build the building and then be a woodcutter. I think it would be nice to have that actions queued rather than waiting them, waiting for them to finish building the building and then send them to be a woodcutter. On to my overall conclusion. So at the start, my review gave it an 8 out of 10, which is around the same as the other ratings. It's a nice in-between of the other ratings, I think. I gave it a rating this high because the things it does well, it absolutely smashes. Everything fits together well, it feels like a well-designed, polished game when you play it, and the positives just outweigh the negatives. But there are certainly some points that could be addressed to make the game that little bit better. Um, should you play it? Put simply, yes. If you've hardly played strategy games at all, like myself, this is a great introduction. And if you're a veteran, there is a high skill ceiling to challenge you and still keep you occupied with the game. Northgard is a very enjoyable game. It is pleasant and charming, yet ruthless at times. And that is the charm of Northgard. It's easy to play, it's enjoyable, has very good base mechanics that hook you, yet it hits you with those challenging moments that can become so addictive and it will keep you coming back to the game. So there we are, I'll be very active in the comment section of this video, so please leave feedback. What do you disagree with? Am I a noob? Have I missed something? And all the rest of it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that bell for more Northguard content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much.